Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have a very exciting release because not only do we have two brand new figures, but we've got two brand new figures from GR Hobbies and Collectibles. Now that is very exciting if you ask me. It is a brand that we haven't heard of for quite some time, so I'm definitely excited to see them back at it again. And you can see we've got, again, a Dino Kyrus, and first of all, I want to state how much I love the box art. You can obviously see we've got two different paint variants of the figure. But if you actually just take a moment here, we'll just bring one into screen and take a look at the box art. You can see we've got the two different paint variants right here. But you also have this really cool, almost like a uh, lake-like setting where the Dino Kyrus are kind of uh, walking around in. But I love that they've included another one way back here in the back. He's kind of blurred. So it just, you know, adds a lot of realism, I think, to the scene. And definitely, as far as the uh, artwork on the front of the box goes, helps to transport you into this scene. And again, I think, in my opinion, appreciate the models even more. But it absolutely looks fantastic as far as that goes. If you turn it on the side, there's not really a whole lot going on. And now it's actually upside down here on the back so we'll flip it over and now you can see basically some images here on the back stating first of all we've got the life echo series dino kyrus 135th scale so that tells us again that this is a 135th scale model which is definitely really cool you can also see again that it's le1 so i would imagine that's life echo one so this would be the first in this series so i'm really excited for whatever else they're going to create and of course you could see some really nice images here of the dinosaurs contained within and the other box is definitely going to be the same it's the same images on the front same images on the back so as always i'm super hyped to take a look at this let's pop these boxes open and check them out so here are our two dino Kyrus, and you know, straight out of the box, I must say, these are really well done, and they are very high quality. They actually have, like, some decent weight to them, and look exceptional. They definitely did a great job on the sculpts. I think that was pretty obvious just from the original images, but they've also done a very nice job on the paint apps on both of these. Really loving this one, of course, because it's got that kind of prehistoric planet look to it, but I actually really quite like this one. Definitely makes a really neat looking kind of a, in my opinion, a female. Although, I mean, it's a little bit brighter. I guess you could look at it as maybe the male. I'm not too sure which one you would go with as far as that goes. They do both look really nice. But one thing that's actually really cool about this set is... When you go on Lana Time Shop, which is where I recommend purchasing these from, you can order, you know, individually each one. Or you can order them with the base. There is actually a base for these figures. And you can also order the base individually and not even the figures, which is really crazy to give you so many different options. But we have the base here as well. And that is definitely a really nice looking base i always love having bases with my dinosaur models i think it's just such a great thing to be able to create kind of like a diorama but this is probably one of the nicest looking bases i have ever seen because there's just so much included with this you've got all sorts of different variations of vegetation as well as again just like some stones over here you've got it old dead tree over here to the side and uh, it all looks really good again definitely going to look awesome once we get these dino Kyrus on the base but the thing I want to do first is jump to a closer look and check them out from there so let's get to it so we will begin with the kind of more prehistoric planet in my opinion version and you can see we've got some really nice looking fine detail here in the face you've got the beak sculpted out beautifully and you can see all kinds of like cracks and crevices within the beak here of our Dino Kyrus. You can also see some variation of color to that area as we have a little bit of variation to the browns in that spot. As you transition back into the face of the dinosaur though, you can see a really nice bluish tone pick up there around the eye. You can also see the feathering of our Dino Kyrus pick up. And I think the paintwork of the eye is also really well done. You can see we've got like a white and a black pupil, but they've also outlined it with a darker tone around that area. So it shines very nicely, really pops and stands out. And we have a gloss coat on the eye, giving us that nice realistic eye shine. You can see the nostrils sculpted out here on the tip of the snout as well. And another thing that's really fun about the figure is, yes, you have an articulated jaw. And you can actually get that mouth open pretty wide. And once you lead there to the inside of the mouth, you can see the sculpting and detailing in here looks really good as well. 
Very nice, very precise paintwork for the inside of the mouth. Nicely sculpted tongue. And you can see on the inside of the mouth on the upper side. You can really take notice to the gloss coat, I think, right there. Especially in the back of the throat. You can see that there's a nice saliva-like look on the inside of the mouth of the Dino Kyrus as well again. So uh, very nice looking as far as that goes. And overall, I love the fact that we have... An articulated jaw on this figure. You don't get too many Dino Kyrus with articulated jaws. You can also see we've got a different tone of blue here for the underside of the throat of the dinosaur, as well as again the darker tones up here on the back. But I love the difference in blue right there. You've got this really beautiful light blue, but then kind of like a darker blue right there around the eye. You also have again a uh, very dark gray or a black for the primary body color and as you move through you can see the feather detail looks really nice on the figure very wavy feathers very emu like i would say as far as the way that that is sculpted out and as you lead down into the neck you start to pick up this kind of like white striping and spotting and designing here just adding a little coloration to the feathers of the dinosaur here on the underside though you can see the skin of the neck and throat is present down here it's just as you transition up it then turns into feathers you can also see a nice light tone for that area that kind of disappears very quickly because the feathers almost overtake the entire area here of the underside of the dinosaur in the chest at least it starts here in the neck and then as we lead down into the chest it's pretty much again overtaken with feathers you can see on top of the dark tone there's also some lighter tones kind of creeping through some of the feathers of our dino chiris. as you lead up here you can again see the arms sculpted out you can also see a little extra plumage here coming off of the back of the arm you can see the elbow right there some muscle definition kind of shining through the arm even if it is covered in feathers they have still elaborated the muscle definition of the dinosaur pretty nicely you can also see that we've got a very nice hand sculpt we've got some scoots running down the fingers there for the dinosaur kind of like a uh, variation of a brown for the hands but almost has kind of like a slight reddish tint to it as you lead out here into the claws of our Dino Kyrus, you can see that they start out with that same similar dark brown, maybe a slightly different shade actually, that starts here and then they transition very smoothly to a white for the tips of the claws and that looks really good. You can also see the undersides of the hands look really nice as far as the fine detail goes. But as we lead back up here into the side of our dinosaur, First of all, being a Dino Kyrus, you're going to see a massive section of this dinosaur, but you can also see again that we've got the same type of feathering that runs through the course of the body, again that very emu-like feathering. We continue to have the dark tone with the kind of whites popping up here and there. And it almost seems like we have like a light wash that's been applied kind of uh, creeping in and out of a lot of the feathers on the figure as well. You can see as you lead up here into the top again of that, you know, hump like area of our Dino Kyrus, we do have a striping effect moving down through the upper part of the dinosaur as you lead through the course of the body out into the tail. As you lead down here into the thigh, you can kind of make out the muscle definition yet again here. And I love how good of a job they've done of sculpting out the feathers where it's not just super generic detail the whole way through. You can see like there's areas that they've sculpted where you have kind of like fluffier feathers poking up and misplaced feathering and stuff as you move through. Really nice touches like that, I think, just add an extra level of realism to a model. As you move down from that area, you can see leading down, we've got the knee right here. We transition those feathers away. We've got the calf muscle here as we return back to the skin texture. And they've given a really nice light wash to this area as well to highlight all of that detail. And you can see it does exactly that as you move down. You've got the scoots there on the front of the foot. You again have the nails of the foot painted similarly to what we had seen up there on the hand, again with that dark tone transitioning out to the light tips for the claws of the dinosaur. And I definitely think it looks really nice, maybe a little bit heavy as far as that wash goes right in that spot. For the most part, though, it looks really good, and I always love when companies will include like a light wash in the feet or legs of a dinosaur similar to this because I think it just kind of gives it that sort of dusty dirty look and uh, that is something as well that you would see on like you know emus ostriches something like that where you kind of see this sort of look where it has like that kind of like dust in between all the cracks and crevices of its skin you see that same thing here again for the 
Dinochirus. And then as you move back up, you can see that we have a little bit more frequency when it comes to the stripes moving along, but we also start to pick up on all sorts of those spots moving out, which really is quite the display out here on the tail, definitely giving our Dinochirus some flashiness as you lead out there into the tail. And then as you lead along the top, you pick up on this really cool little area of feathering out here, the plumage on the end of the tail looks really nice, and it's also very majestic looking as far as the sculpt goes. You can see a nice waviness to the feathers as you lead out there, and again, that striping effect runs all the way out onto the tail. As you lead here to the underside, you can see more really nice feather detail here, but as you lead back closer to the underside of the dinosaur here of the tail, you start to see the feathers again disappear, and we return to that skin texture, and the paintwork of this area is nicely done as well. You can see variation of color on the underside of our Dinochirus as well moving along, and there is a cloaca present right there as well, so they did add that nice little bit of realism. If you look at the dinosaur from the front, you can see a turn in its head toward its left, so you can see again that turn isn't major enough to cause any sort of a huge difference when it comes to the detailing aspect on one side to the other. So you're going to see pretty much the same thing over here. Again, very nice, very consistent paintwork with what we had seen on the first side. As you lead down, you can see the arm is in a different position over here compared to what we saw on the first side, though. This arm is lifting up a little bit higher than what we saw on the other side, but very nicely sculpted hand, nicely sculpted claws again on this side of the dinosaur as well. And then as you lead back here, you can definitely see that kind of lighter wash picking up really nicely in the feathers of the dinosaur as you lead back here. You can also see how the skin and feathers are kind of bunching up right here as the dinosaur is taking a step forward. So really kind of, you know, pushing the leg into the stomach, scrunching that up a little bit. You see that striping effect again running down here along the side of the dinosaur. And then as you lead down, you can see a seam where the knee is connected but I don't think that takes away from the figure at all really it's just something that I did want to uh, mention but as you lead down the wash looks really nice on this side as well definitely highlighting each and every crack and crevice of that skin texture quite nicely and then again we lead up you can see the skin kind of stretching off of the tail here as you lead out through the length of that tail with a really nice curve out there for the tail of the Dinochirus. So the sculpt is fantastic, and the paintwork on this prehistoric planet, sort of uh, inspired, I would say, paint scheme version, is definitely really nice. Then we've also got this version, the kind of pinkish version, and what a beautiful looking version of a dinosaur. You don't expect a pink dinosaur to look natural, but they absolutely have pulled that off very nicely with this one. The sculpt is going to be the same when it comes to this one and the other one, so we don't need to go over the sculpting aspect of this figure, but we do, of course, want to take a look at the paint scheme. You can see we've got a nice brownish tone for the beak on this one, but then you have this white that sort of circles around the eye and then leads up here into the beak of the dinosaur. Dinosaur, which is really nicely done. The inside of the mouth sports a nice pinkish tone, actually kind of similar to the body color of the dinosaur. Also has, again, a nice gloss coat to the inside of the mouth, giving it that saliva-like look. The jaw works perfectly, which you can see. You can pretty much put it at any distance you would like, and also stays closed nicely. We have the eyes painted similarly to what we saw in the other one, where we have the black circling around, and then a white and a black pupil. Also, again, sports a gloss coat. And the paint schemes are kind of similar overall, but slightly different. The coloration is obviously quite different, but the design is kind of similar. Because as you move down here, first of all, you can actually see a really vibrant pink right there. That kind of lightens to a lighter variation as you lead down into the neck. And uh, you can also see that rather than like the blue we saw in the other one, we have a white here. So we have a white for the underside of the throat as well, where we had a different blue on the other one. Same sort of tone for the skin textured area, maybe slightly different, but as you move down into the body, you see again that we've got different variations of pinkish tones as well as like a darker area here. Like it's just a really subtle, uh, I don't know if they put like a dark wash here or something, or maybe just a really light airbrushing along that area, but you can see it darken nicely. Then it's got like this lighter pink running through here, and then a darker variation, very different from this tone down here, up here on the back, almost bordering on like an orangish sort of a tone up there on the back of the dinosaur. But just like the other one, we have a striping effect moving down through the course of the spinal column. 
although the stripes aren't quite as large as what we had seen on the other one. These are much smaller, more subtle stripes as you lead down through the course of the back of the dinosaur. You see kind of like the spots and stuff showing up similar to what we had seen on the other one. And there's definitely a light wash that's been applied. You could see it really stand out in some areas more than others, but uh, again, to kind of highlight the feather detail of the dinosaur. As you lead down into the hand, you can see the hand is a dark variation of a brown, so it's pretty similar to the coloration we saw in the first version. The nails as well are kind of painted in the same similar way, so no real big differences there. You can see the pinkish tone here on the underside of the chest again, and then we have like a greenish sort of a tone for the underside of the dinosaur. You can also see that we have a dark wash applied to the underside of this one, as well as the light wash kind of creeping in and out in certain areas of the underside of the dinosaur. As you lead down here into the thigh, you can see again that we transition back to the skin texture. You can see the skin is a dark tone of color, but we yet again have that light wash here, just like we saw on the first version. It's pretty much the same type of paintwork again, leading down into the foot, which I really like because it does help to kind of give them the same similar look and feel, but obviously just different colorations that I would imagine would differ between male and female. And then you lead out into the tail and you continue to have kind of like those really nice little spots picking up here and there just to give some flashiness to the dinosaur as we lead out there toward the tail. The tail follows along here as you get out to the, you know, uh, plumage on the tail. It has that more vibrant kind of like almost like an orangish tone, like an orangish pink out there on the tail. So that really stands out and pops quite beautifully. And then again, you're gonna see pretty much the same thing, of course, over here on the other side, definitely nice and consistent. And overall is definitely a really beautiful looking version of a Dino Chirus. Also, you can see that uh, orangish tone kind of running along here. It almost looks like we actually have some slight hints of like almost a reddish tone, but also the orange uh, running along the back of that plumage there on the arm of our Dino Chirus. So that looks really cool as well. They definitely did a great job on the sculpt, but the paint apps are also really well done on both of these versions. Definitely so cool to see a new Dino Chirus on the market and not just one, we've got two. And then we have the base. And as I was saying earlier, look at how good this base is. That is absolutely phenomenal. Again, we've got a really nice earthy area here for the Dino Chirus, a nice little spot for it to stand and uh, definitely looking like the type of area I would expect the dinosaur to live. You can see we've got some really cool vegetation over here. And uh, on top of that, the entire area is littered sporadically with like this moss that you can see here, which is definitely, again, something I would expect to see in an area that a Dino Chirus might inhabit. You can also see some more vegetation over here, as well as that tree that kind of leads up. And as you look at everything, you can see they've done a very good job of painting everything out in a really nice, realistic way using, you know, of course, washes as well as dry brushing techniques to highlight all of the detail and add color variation. You can see all the moss kind of leading around the tree, even running up the side of the tree, which I really like that. A little more vegetation, similar actually the same type of plant we see over here, kind of poking up over here on the other side of the tree. And then as you move through, you can even see variation to the actual earth when it comes to the coloration. Like you can see darker tones here, lighter tones there, totally different variations of browns and stuff over here. So they did do a great job of adding a lot of variation to the coloration of the ground as well, making sure it looks nice and lifelike. Again, another plant over here, more of that moss just showing up pretty much everywhere as you move through. And then you also have some stones. And even the stones here are different variations of color. You have like a reddish one here and then a totally different coloration for that one. And all of the actual sculpt and texturing looks great on everything on this base. And you also have a nice soft underside for the base so that it doesn't damage whatever you put it on. So I'm really excited to actually get the Dino Chirus on here and check it out on the base. So let's go ahead and do that. So as you can see, the base does fit only one Dino Chirus. I don't think there's any way that we could probably sneak them both in here. So if you want to create one really cool diorama with both of them, I would recommend grabbing two bases so that you can kind of combine the two Dino Chirus together. But once it is on the base, look at how nice that looks. That absolutely creates one of the most impressive visuals I've seen, especially when it comes to a Dino Chirus model, but just in general, when it comes to a dinosaur model overall, that base is just so impressive, as are the Dino Chirus themselves. 
that uh, again the entire thing just comes to life in a really nice way definitely a conversation piece for sure if anybody comes into your house they're going to really take notice to this one very quickly because it's just so striking and there's also a footprint here like the rear leg has a footprint in this spot as soon as you place the foot into that area and then set the dinosaur down if i can get it in the right spot oh there we go now i got it it stands so nicely it's just really nice really stable on the base but as far as a size goes for our dino Kyrus, let's pull it forward a little bit here for a length of course being a dino Kyrus, you're going to expect it to be pretty big so for a length about 13 inches or around 33 centimeters and then for a height the highest point would be the head just shy of five and a half inches or right under 14 centimeters for a size comparison there is mr papo t-rex the attack pack colovasaurus robert muldoon and the collect a human being here next to our gr hobbies and collectibles dino Kyrus, and you can see it absolutely has an impressive size to it no doubt about that definitely a very nice size which you can very clearly see there next to mr papo rex who is a pretty nicely sized figure himself then when it comes to some dino Kyrus comparisons we have the safari ltd version here next to the gr hobbies and collectibles version and you can very clearly see a pretty massive size difference between these two we've also got the collect a version stepping in here for a comparison this is the deluxe version so it's the larger of the two releases that they have out for the dino Kyrus. and you can see that these two are pretty similar in size so definitely sitting in a similar scale overall we also have the pnso version now unfortunately there aren't all that many dino Kyrus models out you would think for such a unique and spectacular spectacular looking species of dinosaur we would have tons but we really don't so uh this is pretty much the last dino Kyrus that i think i'll bring in for a comparison because it's probably the last one that i have that would be a very common figure to own but you can see again the pnso version is also very similarly sized to the gr hobbies and collectibles version maybe slightly more body mass on the gr version but uh, they're very similar overall when it comes to a size. We've also got a Mattel Velociraptor and Dilophosaurus for a totally random comparison here next to the Dino Kyrus. And then for one final comparison with just a few more randoms, we have the Collect A Deluxe Dimetrodon, the Safari LTD U Tyrannus, and Schleich Diabloceratops. Stepping in for another comparison to show you that again the Dino Kyrus is much larger than all of the figures here next to it. So this brand new GR Hobbies and Collectibles Dino Kyrus pair is absolutely fantastic. I think each and every one of the figures that are included here look great. The sculpts are phenomenal. They really are. They have very nice fine detail, very crisp fine detail, and overall show off the beauty of this dinosaur quite nicely. You've also got a nice pose for the dinosaur, nothing super crazy or flashy, just a nice natural pose, looking kind of similar again to what you would expect for the dinosaur to just be sort of walking either through the forest or like we saw on the box art, maybe through a lake or something, definitely kind of resembling that sort of a look where it's just kind of nice and cautiously walking along. We've got some really nice paint apps for both as well, nice paint schemes as well, on top of again the nice natural application of the paint, the paint scheme look very cool i love the kind of inspiration from the prehistoric planet version that you can see on this version the what i would think would be the male version of the two it looks really nice again very very smooth application of the paint and definitely giving the dinosaur a striking look but then you also have that cool pinkish one like i never would have expected a pink to work so well on a dinosaur like this but it really does and definitely in my opinion gives off a strong female vibe for that one and uh, the application of the paint on that one is also really smooth and really natural overall you've also got the base which is fantastic probably one of my favorite bases i've ever seen when it comes to a dinosaur release and the figures look so good once you actually put them on the base again you can only put one on the base at a time maybe you could force the other one in there somewhere i'm not too sure where but it does look really good when you actually do have it on the base and i love the fact that they've released this in a way where you can of course purchase each one of the dinosaurs individually 
or you can purchase them with a base, or you can purchase the base without the dinosaurs. That's just a really cool idea and not something you see very often. So I've got to give them, you know, some props as far as that goes. But overall, this is definitely a fantastic release and definitely a release that I'm happy to see because I can't wait to see more from GR in the future again and see whatever else they are going to be releasing. But if you are interested in picking this one up, I will include a link in the description to where you can do that on Lana Time Shop. Again, definitely the place to go to when it comes to purchasing dinosaur models like this. So make sure you check that link. Go grab this absolutely epic release and also like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.